situations, baseball IQ, runner on second, judges up, a swinging bunt, Real Muto with it, runs him back to second, throws him out at third. Wow, this is exactly what you do right here, catchers. If we have a swinging bunt, that means the batter did not, he did not square around. He's, he's trying to hit the ball as hard as he can. But sometimes they hit it off the end of the bat and just get a little piece of the ball and it goes fair. And it goes three, four, five feet out in front of the catcher and the catcher can field it. Catchers, if you do this, get up, get that ball and stare at that lead runner. Just like Yellick, he stops. What Real Muto does is he runs him back to the least advancing base, which would be second base. You don't want to run him to third base. You want to run him back to second. Once the base runner commits, that's when Real Muto throws it and gives it up, gets rid of it, throws it to one of his in middle infielders who's standing on second. It was Baez, the second baseman. He's the guy that has the ball on a comebacker with a righty up. So just see how this all works out together. Baez is there waiting for the ball. Rendon is on third waiting for the ball. Yellick's hung out to dry. Real Muto sprints at him with the ball in his hand, makes him commit to a base. Right when he commits, he throws it back. Now we got a rundown situation. Baez does one throw, throws it to third base. Yellick basically gives up. He's gone. Man, way to execute, way to get outs right here. This is a swinging bunt. He did not swear around. He took a full hack. The catcher fielded it. We had Yellick, the base runner at second, off. He was hung out to dry in that situation where the base runner stopped. You sprint at him, make him commit, and then throw that ball to the base that he's going to. First baseman's in this. You've got to cover first base, and I need you to stay at home. You see, after the play, Judge takes a turn. If no one's there, he's going to have a huge turn, and he's, he may be able to take second base because of that. You don't want that. Also, maybe you can go and back up this rundown first baseman and let Judge have first base. That would be okay, too. But in this situation, Guerrero Jr. stayed home just in case there was going to be a back pick, which is fine with me. If that rundown got a little bit longer with a couple more throws, I'd expect Guerrero Jr. to get over there. Outfielders, you guys are all backing up. You're not involved in the rundown, but you're there. You're there just in case. You're there to back up in case anything gets by you. Pitchers in this situation, you can go and be a part of the rundown, or since the catcher is, you can go and kind of be the new catcher. Set up for home plate in case there becomes an error. Now we at least have somebody close to home thinking about protecting home plate because that base runner could score still. It's not a guaranteed out right here. Rundowns should be guaranteed outs, but you never know. Everybody has a spot to be in. Everybody has a position to go to. You see the shortstop after the throw from Baez. He took the initiative to go back and cover second base. Great job, guys. Hey, get these plays down. This is advanced. This is exactly what you do in this situation. Sprint at this runner. Now, if there's two outs, go and fill that ball and get the guy out at first. Don't even worry about the base runner. But with zero outs, nobody, nobody out, one out, you do exactly what Real Muto does. And I guarantee you, you're going to start getting these base runners out. All right, guys, great job. Moving on. Situations, baseball IQ, runner on second base. Yellick squares around for a sack bunt right back to the pitcher. Cole gets him out at third. Way to be there, Rondon. Guys, listen, if you're going to bunt and you're going to sacrifice, the last thing we want to do is to bunt it directly at the pitcher. We need to set our angle so we can bunt that ball to the third baseline with a runner on second. We want that third baseman to think it's a hard bunt to him, so they read it. And then they come off third base, which forces the shortstop to cover third base. It's going to make it very difficult for them to get the runner out. So that's first off. Second off, this is such a speed play right here that the third baseman has to recognize that it's not a hard bunt to him. Once he does that, he has to go and cover third base. The only ball that he fields is the one that's hard enough for him to take a couple steps, go field it, turn around, and get the out at third by the shortstop. The pitcher, I need you to cover the third base side so the third baseman can stay home and cover third base. This is always gonna be a bang bang play. Catchers, you gotta pop up and try to get this bunt. Hey, it worked out because we had a bad bunt by Yellick right back to the pitcher. Cole fielded his position, got him out. Shortstop was running around, gonna cover third, but now he's a backup. Second baseman got second. First baseman was crashing on the play. Red bunt went back to first base in case the play, the play went there. Right fielder's back up first. Center field, you got second base. Harper, you got third base. You got second base. Everybody has a place to be. Harper could have been a little bit farther over behind third right there, but hey, at least the outfielders are moving. I need you guys always there, always playing heads up. Way to be in your positions. This is a bunt. Sacrifice bunt, where he shows it early, where, the, where you guys can break right when they show it. You can crash right when they show it. Third baseman, you don't crash on this. If they show early bunt, you don't leave third base. 
The only thing you do is when the ball's bunted, you read hard bunt to you. So stay home, third baseman, when they show early. First baseman, you can crash. Second baseman, you can crash early going towards home plate and creeping over towards first. Still be ready for a hard bunt to you, a push bunt second baseman. Other than that, guys, these bunts are very difficult to get outs on. You have to be in the right position. You have to read the ball. Plus, it's a super hard deal to drop a good sack bunt in this position, too. So hitters, when you're up there and you're asked for a sack bunt, show it early. Lay down a nice bunt. Preset the angle. Here we go. Guys, moving on. Situations, baseball IQ, runner at second base. Sack bunt, Guerrero Jr.'s there. Bam, they get him out of third. Wow, guys, we had people crashing before the pitch was even pitched. What's going on? Here is another example of a way to defend a sacrifice bunt with a runner on second where we cannot let him get to third base no matter what. It's essential we get the lead runner out here. That's what this plays for. This is not the read play where the third baseman reads hard bunt, and if it's not a hard bunt, he goes back and covers third. That's not this play. This play it was, is where everybody, right when the batter squares, before the pitch is thrown or right when the pitch is thrown, everybody breaks. They all break, except the shortstop. We're going to talk about the shortstop in a second. But if you see here, when Cole comes set and he delivers the pitch, first baseman, third baseman, second baseman, all sprinting to a certain assigned area with their own duties. The first baseman, his job right here, he crashes right when you see bunt. Yellick obviously showed bunt early, and that's what you're supposed to do in a sacrifice situation. Show it early, that's okay. You know, right when he's lifting his leg, right when he comes set, something like that, that's okay. Prepare for the bunt. You're sacrificing yourself to move the runner. That's all right. So right when the first baseman and the third baseman see it, they crash. Third baseman crashes too. So their job is to defend, field, get any bunted ball that's directly at them, get it as quick as they can and throw it to third base. That's why they're there. We are trying to get the base runner out of third no matter what. Pitcher, you're doing the same thing. You're covering right in front of the mound. That is your ball. You take it, you call it, come up, throw into third. The second baseman in this play, right when your first baseman and your third baseman crash, that's your cue to start going to first base. You cover first base on this unless we can't get the out at third, we're coming to one to, to, to make sure that we at least get an out on this play. So that's second baseman's job. Short stops. Your job is very difficult. This is an art form to get good at this. Basically, all you want to do is deep the runner into staying close to second base. You follow with him. You stay right behind him. You let him know that you're there during his secondary shuffle. Let him know that you're there. But right when there's action on the ball and it goes towards home, the base runner's attention is going to be reading the bunt down on the ground to get a good jump. He's no longer going to be paying attention to you. It's at that time that you see Tatis Jr. sprint and beat the base runner at second to third base to get the out. This is perfectly executed. This is so good. Mookie, I don't know how they got you, but they sure did. Great job, guys. So check this out. This is how you do it. It's called the wheel play. Bunt defense, runner on second base. You gotta time it right, you gotta play it right, you gotta sell it. If the shortstop just straight up leaves early, that means the base runner at second base is gonna have a huge lead. He's just gonna keep getting off and off and off. And he may even steal third base before the ball's even bunt. We don't want that. We gotta keep him close to second. So when the action of the pitch is going towards home, that base runner is paying attention, making sure that that ball is going to be bunted. So there's a couple things in here that you're going to learn while you're trying to execute this play that makes it very tough. Along with the outfielders, you guys are all crashing right when your teammates crash. You don't hang out and wait for the ball to be pitched. You start jogging in. Outfielders start jogging in. You don't want to sprint in just in case there's a chance there's a slash. If there's a slash and they hit it over your head, Oh man, that's not going to be okay. So outfielders, you start jogging in. Once you see the bunt laid down, that's when you turn on the full sprint and you get to where you got to get to. If you see the center fielder, the only guy in the middle of the diamond, he's got second base in this. Right fielder, you're backing up first. Harper, left fielders, you got third base. Any play at third base, you're there. And that's where we want you. That's where we want the ball, and that's where we want to get the out. Remember, third base means you have to lay a tag down. There is no force out. Guys, butt defense, the wheel play, runner at second base, get it done.
Situations, baseball IQ, runner on second base. Already a ground ball right back to the pitcher. Got him out at third. Yellick, what are you doing? Man, okay, let's check it out. Pitchers in this situation, you have to be aware that there's no force out for that runner on second base. Know your base runners. Is he fast? Is he not? Does he like to steal? You got to keep him close. To the situation with the runner on second base and a ground ball right back to the pitcher, the first thing the pitcher does is looks the runner back. You have to turn around and put your eyes on the runner. If he is taking up ground, trying to advance to the next base, you get rid of the ball and throw it to third. Just like Cole does right here. Rendon, you covered it, money. So, pitchers in this situation, the first thing you do is look the runner back. If he goes back to second, then the play goes to first. Catchers in this situation, make sure you're very vocal. You see the base runner going. You need to help out your pitcher and your third baseman that the runner is coming to third. You've got to yell out 3-3-3 as loud and as quickly as you can read it. Tell your pitcher to go to third base because the base runner is advancing. It's not like he's hanging out there. He is going to third. Get rid of that ball and get him out. you got to tag it. you got to tag the base runner because there is no force. Third base, understand the difference. If there was a runner on first base and second with this ground ball, then we have force outs. Now what we could do is throw it to third, throw it to second, we can throw it to second, throw it to first, we can get a double play, but in this situation with the runner on second, ground ball back to the pitcher, look him back, the advance to third, get rid of that ball. First baseman's in this situation, you need to cover first immediately, second baseman's. What you guys are doing on this play is you're backing up second base, you're going after the ball because it's right up the middle, you might have a chance to field that. Since you're already there, I need you to back up second base in case there's a rundown. Short stops, you got the bag at second. Cover second base, straddle that thing, give me a target in case Yellick gets into a rundown or the base runner decides to take two. Third baseman, you're covering third base. Left fielder, you gotta get all the way and back up third base. Center fielder, you're backing up second. Bellinger, you are backing up the right side of the field. You're backing up first base in case there's a throw there. Everybody has a place to be. Let's get it on, moving on. Situation space by Q, you got a runner on second base. Ground ball hit to Guerrero Jr. He throws it to third, tag all the way to first, gets Judge out, double play. Wow, let's check it out. Pitchers, in this situation, you gotta understand the ground ball is going towards first base. Regardless of the base runner, you have to cover first. And the first baseman's gonna bring that ball to first base. Second baseman's there, great job, way to cover it. Shortstop, you got second base. Third baseman, you got third base. Now, the only way it's possible to get this base runner realistically out at third base is to have a ball that's hit that's hard enough that gets the first baseman going in and towards third base or third base line. The momentum in this game is a lot, it's a big deal. And with the momentum going in on the ball towards third, Guerrero Jr. is able to come up, throw into third base, and get a quick snap tag right there by Rendon. And then because the base runner, I wouldn't say Judge is the super fastest base runner ever, they're able to get him out of first base with a strong arm from third. So this play is possible, guys. It's very difficult to get that runner at second base when the base runner does his job and moves him over to third by hitting the ball on this side of the field. But just understand that this is a ball where the first baseman is in. He comes in, his momentum's coming in, and he makes that throw to third base. If the first baseman was going back on the ball, or if it was just a straight up hit, and he's playing a little bit deep like he is, it's gonna be very, very difficult for you to get that runner out of second. But I want you to understand what our strategy is here. We wanna get the lead runner, especially with nobody out. If there's nobody out, we wanna get that guy out at third base. We wanna look him back and make sure he doesn't go. And if he does go and we have an opportunity to get him out, we want to get him out. With one out, you might just field this ball and go and touch first base. And now we have a, a, a base runner on third base with two outs. Now all we got to do is get one more out, the base runner's not going to score. That's a good situation to be in right there. That's not bad at all. That's better than one out and having runners on first and third where we don't get an out on this play. We don't want that to happen. Guarantee me an out in this play. If you can get an out at third base, let's do it. If you have two outs, don't even mess around. Just go touch first base after you feel that ground ball. Call it an inning. Great job, guys. Catchers, you got to be loud. Pitchers, you gotta, you got to cover first base. Second baseman, thanks for being there. Everyone has a place to be. Outfielders, you guys are crashing, backing up all the throws. No one's stopping. No one's just standing there looking at the play. Everyone is moving and trying to help the team win right here. All right, guys, moving on. Situations, baseball IQ, you got a runner on second base. Judge hits a ground ball to the second base side, moves the runner over to third base, but they back pick him. Nice play, Guerrero Jr. Way to be heads up right there. Base runners, don't make the mistake. After you advance on a base, on a ground ball, you, have, you advance one base. Don't take a turn during an infield play that's too big, or don't take a turn and come off the bag without looking and finding the ball. I mean, this is 
pointless. You're not going to take four on a throw to first base, especially from the second baseman. This is only a one base advance, you know, advancing ball right here that's hit. This is not a single to the outfield, a right to the second baseman. You're going to take one base, what, which Yellick does. But you know what? He comes up after he slides and he rounds the bag or he gets off too far and or he just didn't even slide and he just ran through and took a turn. This is not the time to take a turn, base runners, because you're going to get back hit by a good first baseman. The third baseman's going to beat him. He's ready. So understand that, guys. First baseman's in this situation. You know that we're going to get this out right here. The, the hitter that hit a judge, it's a ground ball to second base. There's a runner on second. He moved the runner over. You know, you're getting the guaranteed out. And then what Guerrero uh, does right here, he has the heads up play. Before Yellick does the turn, he, it doesn't even matter. He throws the ball to third base, expecting him to make a big turn. And if he does, the ball's already on its way. Rendon's going to be there to tag him out. This is how you do it. Pitchers, in this situation, you got a ground ball to that side of the field, second base, first base side. you got to go and try to cover. Now, once you know that it's not your ball, you see it going through, possibly going to back up first base. Absolutely. Be heads up right here. Short stops, you guys got to cover second base. Third baseman's obviously, you need to be at third because of this back pit. You know, Baez might come to third base on this, but guys, typically speaking, this is usually what happens. When you have a runner on second base and the ball's hit to the second baseman, they're playing far enough back that it's going to be nearly impossible to get this runner out at third. Now, it's possible the ball that's hit is going to dictate this. But the ball that was hit took Baez to his left, came up throwing to first base, got the guaranteed out. Guerrero Jr. comes up with a high baseball IQ play and, and back picks the guy before he even takes the turn and gets him out, possibly. It looks, it's a bang bang play right there. Very nice. Catchers, you guys got to be loud, you got to step up. We have runners in scoring position. Make sure all your guys are in the right position and backing up. Outfitter, you guys are all crashing. Everyone has a place to be, everyone has a spot to go to. Make sure that you're sprinting, hustling, and being there for your teammates backing up. You can get these outs just like these guys right here, guys. Get these plays down. Moving on. Situations, baseball IQ. You got a runner at second base. Hard hit ground ball to the shortstop. He throws it to first. Gets him out. All right. Base runner at second. Good job. Good base running right there, Yelish. So, ground ball in front of him. He goes back to second. Tatis Jr., the shortstop. He throws it up to first. He does look the runner back. Remember, guys, without a runner on first base, and there's a runner on second. There's no force. There's only just a runner on second base. No one's forcing him to go to third on a ground ball. That means that you would have to tag him if you go and attempt to get him out at any of these bases, second or third. You have to tag him. On the back pick, on the throw to third, if he attempts to go, you got to tag him out. There's no force play. This is a look back play for any infielder getting the ball. If that base runner attempts to go to third, we want to get him out. If there's two outs, then we, no matter what, the ball's going to first base. Understand the difference right there. That is the look back play with a runner on second, ground ball to shortstop. Pitchers in the situation. You see Coley throws a great ground ball. The play is going to first base, but he's thinking through the play, and he knows that that base runner on second base might attempt to take third base right after the shortstop throws it to first. So he's going to go and back up the throw that never even happens from first base to third base just in case it does happen. This is how you do it right here, guys. you got to pre plan and know what the situation is even if it doesn't happen you got to be there to back up. catchers in this situation your eyes have got to be on that base runner at second base you got to let everyone know if he tries to attempt to take third you are the eyes on the field you got to be loud and be vocal step up with a runner in scoring position if this ball gets past the shortstop the base runner might be coming home first baseman find the ball see it on the ground find your base Bring up a target. You don't know what the shortstop's going to do because you don't know what the base runner's going to do. I need you at first base to feel this ball to get this base runner out that hit the ball. Then, after that, I need you to come off the bat and be ready to throw that base runner at second out at third. Or be ready to back pick him, back pick him at second base. This isn't just a lazy play for the first baseman where you're just fielding it out at first. No. Come off the bag after the play if that base runner is trying to attempt to go to third or he's, far, he's too far off from second base. Be heads up in this situation. Second baseman, you got second. Short stops, charge the ball, look the base runner back at second. He should not be going in this situation. If he does, get him out at third. Third baseman, in this play, since you have a runner on second base, I don't want you going after the ball all the way because if, the, if you leave third base stranded, then that base runner at second base is easily going to advance one base on a throw to first, and we don't want that. So third baseman, you can attempt to go to th for the ball, 
in this situation, you have to hustle back and cover third base. Outfielders, Harper, left fielder, everybody, they're charging in. Harper, that's your ball. Shortstop, you have to back that up. If it gets past them, it's yours. Center fielders, you guys got to back up second base. Right fielder, you're backing up the throw from the shortstop to the first baseman. And if you see after the play, Harper still wasn't done. There was no throw to third, but he was making sure that he was there just in case. Risk management, guys. Everybody has a position to be in. Everybody has a place to go. Keep it up. Get these down. Moving on. Situations. Baseball IQ. Runner on second base. Hard hit ground ball to the third baseman. They stop the runner from going. Get him out of first. I like it. Nice play. Good base running right there, Gellick. Good job. The ball was in front of him. He went back. With no outs, one out, you don't want to advance on that ball. You're not going to be able to. The third baseman's going to tag you. He's going to do something that's it's going to make it easy for him to get you out. You don't want to do that. Stay back. Get back to second base with the ground ball to third. Now, if it gets through, man, you're going to go try to score. Go try to score. The only thing a base runner can do in this situation, besides making a mistake and advancing on that ground ball, would be to wait for the throw to first and then advance. In this situation, Yellick doesn't do that. Pitchers in this situation realize that is a look back situation. With the ground ball going to third base, we're pretty sure the throw is going to go to first, but then the, the play after that, the play might go to third base. Pitchers, I want you back in that play up. Catchers, you guys got to keep your eyes on the runner at second base. I know the ball is going to third and the third baseman can see the runner, but you still need to be vocal and let everybody know what's going on. Now on the throw to first base, catchers, your eyes can be on the base runner and watch him. If he starts to advance, if it looks like he's going to advance, I want you hollering three, loud, and it needs to be quick. Tell your first baseman that the runner is going and he needs to come, come up throwing to third base. First baseman's in this situation, you have to be ready, first off, to feel this throw from Rendon. Get this guy out at first base. And then you can come off the bag. If you see that base runner creeping off second base, if it looks like he's going to attempt to go to third base, you need to be ready for it. Be ready for it. Set those feet, set those shoulders, separate those hands, be ready to throw a bullet to third base and get him out. Second baseman's on this. You guys got second base immediate on the throw. We're going to try to back pick this guy. If he gets too far off, I got a guy there at second. Shortstop, you're backing up the play. You're trying to get the ground ball. Rendon doesn't come up with it. You're there. You stop that ball. Don't let it pass. Don't let it go to the outfield. After the play, there could be a throw to third base. And what the shortstop does here, he has his momentum going to third. Third baseman is throwing to first, so he takes it upon himself to take over third base in case there's a play there. In case that runner at second tries to advance to third on the throw, he's not going to make his third baseman work extra hard and try to get back after the throw. He's going to be there. But it's okay if third baseman's after you throw, you can make it back to third base. You don't have to have the shortstop cover third. Here. You can come up throwing third baseman's and tell a shortstop, hey, I got, I got third, no matter, I got it, I got it. Just communicate, communicate, communicate. But I like this right here, the shortstop's taking over third base. That's great, that's great teamwork right there. Outfielders, you guys are all crashing. You know, left field, this is your ball right here if it gets passed. And then after that, you have to play after the throw to first, you gotta go back up third. Great job, Harper. Center fielders, you're backing up any ball going to second base. There could be a back pick, be ready. And right fielders, you guys are backing up any throw to first base. Everybody has a place to be. Let's get these plays down. Execute them. Get the outs. Great job. Situations. Baseball IQ. Runner on second base. Hard hit ground ball right at the first baseman. Between his legs to the right fielder. He's coming up throwing to home. Bam! They still get him. What a play. All right. Pitchers on this situation right here. You want to keep the runner close to second. You want to throw a ground ball. You know that if there's a ground ball to the first base side of the field, that, that base runner is going to advance. So you want him to hit it towards the third baseman or the shortstop. The hitter did a good piece of hitting right here by moving the runner by putting the ball to the right side of the field. Hitters, that's what you want to do. You want to hit it hard to the right side of the field. Since that happened, the ground ball was towards the first baseman. Pitchers, you have to cover first. Right when it went through, then you become a backup man for home. That's exactly what Cole did. Check him out right here. He went to cover first, realized it's through, then he backs up home. Catchers in the situation, you have to read the play. You gotta tell your pitcher to get over there and cover first. But once it's through, tell your first baseman he's the cutoff man on lineup four. First baseman's on this play right here. Hey, look, ground ball right at you between your legs. It's gonna happen. No reason to get emotional. Keep your head up. Turn around. Go towards home plate. Get your hands up. Be ready for that ball. Line up throw between right field and home plate. Second baseman's on this play. I want you backing up your first baseman. Baez didn't have a chance to get to this ball, but he was on his way. His momentum was still going towards first base. Just keep it going and cover first base. You're the first baseman now. 
shortstops in this situation immediately go and cover second base i don't expect a ball to be thrown to you in this situation but in case the runner does advance two bases on a single to right field like judge does here the first baseman might cut that ball the catcher might say hey cut two in this situation i need somebody covering second base shortstop that's you also a back pick from the catcher after the play at home is finished. In this situation, it looks like Judge was gonna be way too safe for Real Muto to throw to second base, but Tatis Jr. shortstops, you gotta cover second on this play. Runner on second, single to right field, shortstops, you got second base. Third base, you guys are covering third base. On the throw home, be ready for that base runner to stop. Be ready for a throw from the catcher. Be ready for a throw from the cutoff man. I need you covering third. Right fielders on this. For the play, runner in scoring position, runner on second base, you are expecting a hard ground ball right at you, and you're expecting to field that thing clean and do a nice crow hop and throw that thing all the way home. In this play right here, Bellinger actually makes an error on the throw by throwing it over the cutoff man's head. Judge reads it, hesitates, and then goes. He makes sure that it's over the head of Guerrero Jr. and then takes second base. So you actually, because of a bad throw, because it was high, not cuttable, we can say, hey man, that's an error on you for giving him an extra base right there. Because the ball should have been read as a cuttable ball, this would have stopped, possibly held up the runner from going to two. So this is another example of why outfielders need to keep the ball low. You're going to have base runners taking two balls on you. Not, not a good thing. Center fielder, you got to back up the right fielder on this in case it gets by him. And this thing turns into a whole, whole mess. So left field, you got to back up third base. And that's basically it. You guys got to, it's okay. It's an error. It went through. It's a single now. And we got to defend that base runner from, on second base from scoring. Everybody's got a job to do. Great job. Keep it up. Moving on. Situations, baseball IQ. Runner on second base. Hard hit single up the middle to the center fielder. Here comes the base runner towards home. Trout up with it. Real Muto's got it. Tags him out. Man, what a play. Cool. Way to throw a ground ball. Pitchers in this situation. You want to throw a ground ball. You don't want that guy scoring on a single to center field, but hey, look, it happened. You need to back up home plate. Catchers in this situation, you have got to yell out 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Remember, the runners on second base, if it goes to the outfield, they are throwing two bases ahead. We are defending home plate from that base runner on second base from scoring. You want to line your base runner up, you want to be loud, and you want to let him know if he's going to have to cut that ball four, cut that ball two, or cut that ball one, depending on what the base runner from second base is doing. If he's going to be safe, you don't want that ball going home. You want to stop the base runner that hit it from going and taking two. Be smart catchers. Let's go. First baseman's on this one. You are my cutoff man. The runner on second base, any ball to center field or right field, you are the cutoff man. Since it went to center field, I want Guerrero Jr. First baseman's get out behind that mound, right in between the mound and second base, more towards the mound with your hands up, yelling 4-4-4. Four, four, four. If you have to go out a little bit farther, that's cool. That's fine. Know your outfielder's arms. If the catcher says cut four, Cut that thing glove side and get rid of it. Throw a strike to home plate and get that guy out. And this one, the ball was high for spacemen. If the ball is high, I still want you to act like you're cutting. Don't just give up on it and let the base runner that hit the ball know that you're not cutting it. And you're going to give him an advantage on taking two. Second baseman's on this. I want you to stop the ball. I want you diving, backhanding this, making the play. Once it gets through, you got to get up and hustle to first base. You're my first baseman now. Shortstops in this situation. I want you going for the ball. Once it's through, you're going to head over towards second base. Defending second base, covering that bag in case the guy that hit the ball turns into the base runner at first and he's trying to take two. I got a guy there. Shortstop, you're my man. Covering second base. The ball from the outfield is not coming to you. I don't want your hands up, but expect the ball from the cutoff man or from home plate. Third baseman's on this. Let the base runner go through. Then you have to get on third base, straddle that bag, be ready for a ball. The base runner might stop and head back to third, and then you're going to get some action, either from the cutoff man or from home plate. Be ready. Center fielder, outfielders, with a runner on second base, you know that if you get a single right at you, you are throwing four. You're trying to get this guy out of home. You do not want him to score. Charge that ball, come up throwing with a good crow hop, throw it through the cutoff man. You want a long hop, the catcher, or throw it all the way through. Right fielder, you're backing up the center fielder on this. Left fielder, you're backing up third base. Great job, guys. Get these plays down. Moving on. Situation space going like you run around second base hard hit ground ball left third base side through the third baseman's hand to the left fielder he comes up throwing we got the third baseman as a cut through the cut to the catcher he's gone what was Yellick doing man that was not the time to try to score 
if you see the base runner right here, the rules are, if you're a runner on second base and there's a ground ball hit in front of you for the third base or to the shortstop, you're supposed to go back. He does this. He does it correct. But his mistake is trying to turn this into two. Once he goes through, he starts going. He takes third and he just turns it. There's no way for him to score on that. He should have read it. He should have taken a hard turn at third and then hustled back to third and stop. Don't let that happen to you, base runners, on a single to left field ground ball in front of you and it holds you up and then you try to score on it. It's okay just to take one base on this. All right, pitchers, great job throwing a ground ball. Once this is through, you got to back up home. Ball is coming there. Catchers, you got to line up your third baseman. He's the cutoff man for runners on second, single to left field. Make sure that his hands are up. He's jumping up and down, screaming 4-4-4. Four, four, four. Let him know to cut four. Let him know to let it go through. Let him know we got to turn the ball around and go cut three, cut two, cut one. You never know in this situation. Any of them could happen. Short stops. In this situation here, you're going to be covering third base. You are not the cutoff man, you are the third baseman. Once this goes through, the third baseman drops down, shortstop heads over to third base. The timing may be different than in this example. The shortstop might get to third earlier or a little bit later, but make sure that you get there. Make sure that you get there. Second baseman, you guys turn on to the second base bag and hold it down. If the runner from first base, the guy that hit it, is trying to take two, I got a guy there. First baseman, you're not a cutoff in this situation. What you're going to do is you're going to go into the infield grass or move back like Vladdy Jr. does in this situation. He gets out of the way of the base runner taking his turn, and then he slips right in, stands there on the bag and straddles it and takes over. Great job right there. Ready for a comebacker uh, from the catcher or from the cutoff man. Just a line drive, back pick. He's ready for it. Everybody is on a base. Outfielders, right fielder, you're charging in straight, reading the ball going to second base, first base, coming from home. You are the main backup for the right side of the field. Center fielder, you're backing up the left fielder. Everybody has a job to do. Let's go.